Hello everybody, welcome to a midweek Wardy's Waffle. You can see a bit of action behind me, frame going up for a marquee. Got a housewarming party on Saturday night, so they've just come a bit early. So they're just putting the uh, um, roof on, leaving all the sides open so the grass gets uh, keeps plenty of light and uh, doesn't go off too much. So it should be all right, hopefully, uh, by the time they take the frame down. So yeah, we've got a housewarming party, but we're not quite in the house yet. Decorators are in, there's still bits and bobs to do, carpets aren't in, which is going to be another three weeks probably before we're in. And we are harvesting all the oats. We start off with the light land up on the heath, which we've done. Not the best of yields, which you'll see in a minute. We we'll also um, look at the navy beans. We had Eric and Rosanne from Warwick University come to look at those and the progress of those. So we've got a bit of a chat with them and look at that as well. But we're going to, mainly going to be looking at the oats. You can see the combine in the background somewhere. Where are we? Can't we see them over the front of the bonnet. Somewhere there, that's it, in the background. So the oats are doing that. But just before we get into the oats, just want to look at this stewardship plot that we're in at the minute because it's not looking too clever. So this winter bird food plot's not looking very well. It's been absolutely hammered by slugs, despite having slug pellets on it. Just look at that, how the leaves, so when the focus there are stripped, that slugs that's done that, done there, they could absolutely annihilate and totally wipe out a crop, and that's what they've done here. You can just see the damage they're doing to the plants there. It just looks generally sick and the holes. It nearly needs another dose of slug pellets, this does, I think, to save this. Yeah, not looking very good at all. So there's Reuben opening up a new land. One thing that we have noticed, there's quite a lot of regrowth here. When I say regrowth, that's in the stubbles of green. Just see the green growing there. Now, I don't know whether that's seed that's been shed um, or whether it's regrowing out, out the um, stubble roots. I think it's growing out the stubble. Here. So the seed from somewhere here. I'll have to get a trowel and just pickle this about gently and just to see if that's fresh stuff or or old out the stubble. But you can see there's a tinge, when you look there, there's a tinge of green in all the stubble. This is a second load of oats coming into the shed. I suppose there's no wonder they're not doing very well when, uh, when they weren't planted till April. Well, these ones were a bit early, these were in March, these ones. But the colour of them, this is what I can't get over. This is a sample left from last year. Look at those against the difference in colour and some of these they look a bit mouldy I don't know what's the matter with them actually dark colour compared to those they're not the same at all so I'm going to take these to coke seeds who we've got the contract with to see what they say about them this is only at Sleaford this is an old shed but it's still very high which is great actually one of the best sheds we've got apart from the very new one or I say very new the one the better one at the other main farm See from up here, they are thinner. And doing five and a half kilometres an hour. Looking at the field view screen there, average yield 2.4 tonnes per hectare. The figure on the right, and that's the yield map. So anything in the dark green is, is over three tonne a hectare. So if you're in the middle of the field, you can see it's doing a bit better. But not a lot, just scroll that top head with Ruben. Yeah, there, there's quite a lot of wild oats up there as well. You can see how bad that is. And there's the scale down at the bottom, and I can't not see the one. There we are. So you can alter that and edit that so you can see what, what colours up your line. There. So 
this is only the third trailer load. How many hectares have you done, Ruben? So 13.3 hectares and two trailer loads that won't be weighing a lot, maybe what was a 13 tonne load, probably something like that. Off a field that's 50, 55 acres, something there. Probably won't be any more than five or six trailer load off. We're in these navy beans again, and I've got Roseanne here from Warwick University, who's a crop researcher at the Crop Centre, and Eric again, who is a, a scientist or crop scientist. Crop scientist, yeah. that's right, from Warwick University. We're just looking at these um, these navy beans because we're about to desiccate them, spray them off because there's quite a lot of greenness here. And what's your thoughts then, Eric, when you're looking at them? We ought to have done them maybe before, but then there's quite a lot of green still here. Yeah, uh, we're looking at the pods. So we're, we're focusing on the pods themselves. They're ready to be harvested. Yeah. Uh, we need to get the moisture out of the crop. So that's where the spray yeah. to, to knock back the leaves um, and any of the weeds that are out here. Uh, if that moisture isn't in the combine, then you're going to have cleaner yeah. beans coming out. Yes, and that's what we're all after, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. So these are the Godiva. We'll just get in the right way for the sun. Straight away, you can see here, the pods are very, very long, and the beans are sort of a grey colour. I would say blonde, a sort of yeah. yellow, yellowish, they yeah. turn brown. Yeah. yeah sure. But when you look at the pods, you can just see how long they are. We can look at that one, that pod there, and on the ground, all these pods are on the ground. This is why we need them at Don Header to, to, uh, to harvest them. You can see there, green plant there with the pod. But yeah, yeah we've, got here's... Of, we've got six seeds in that pod. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, look at that. Usually five or six seeds per yeah, pod. Yeah, and this is for the cooking market, isn't it? This is for the uh, uh, the initial market we're planning would be for cooking. Yeah, yeah people that know how to cook beans. Yeah, yeah, look at that. Uh, really it's good. a re replacement for kidney beans and pinto beans. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then we're on the line. You can just see down us here where Nala is in the distance. Um, just to the right of Nala, where she's crossing it now. That is the um, Godiva on the right, and on the left here is a Capulet. And you can just see straight away, Eric's got a plant there. Pods are a lot smaller and higher off the ground. Yeah. And when you look at the pods, yeah, look at the beans there. Completely different bean. And these are the ones that have been bred for this climate and for the UK conditions. Yeah. Yeah. So it looks like a navy bean. Uh, we talk about this as being a capulet bean, yeah. and we say capulet because it's a variety that we know grows in English sunshine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then if I just put alongside there, you can see we've got the the diver next to it that we've just looked at as well. So big difference. Okay, we'll just nip across the other side. We've got some trials, of course, across there where we've got the companion crop of black oats that has been sprayed off. Some other later drilled stuff just through there. So we'll just have a wander over there. So we think, so even though there is some greenness there, because obviously if you glyphosate, we're not using glyphosate here, by the way, we're going to use a product called Spotlight um, that's maybe a little bit kinder to a potential problem with germination uh, affecting this because it's just obviously going to be a seed crop. So we're using this um, Spotlight, which is a potato desiccant, but it's also cleared for beans as well. And we're going to see what those are like. But um, obviously the danger is that if we get do these too early, that it will shrivel them up but we think they're going to be all right. Yeah. And uh, you can see with that greenness, there's moisture in there. Yes. That moisture, if it gets into the combine, you're going to have white seeds yeah. that start getting uh, caked with mud and dirt. Yeah, yeah. So that's the purpose of the desiccant, is to, to take the moisture out of the crop. Yeah. We're now in the area where we had the, the black oats as a companion crop. And the idea of this was to try to pull the oats up a little bit so they didn't go so flat to the floor. I think it has partly worked. Yeah, they do seem a bit taller. Yeah. Uh, forget, were these planted the same as uh, yeah. the crop we're just looking at? You mean the same the date? Same, same date. No, these were planted a, a, a bit later, about 10 days later. Yeah, so if you have some plants, that's, the pods themselves are looking a little bit green. Yeah. If you open up the seeds, look a bit green. Yes. But that'll dry down. If you were to spray desiccant on, that would probably dry down. You'd still get some beans harvested. Yeah, yeah. On these oats, there are some of the seeds possibly viable, some aren't, but they're so small. And uh, if they are, if they do come in the sample with the beans, we should just separate them out. They'll be easily separated. 
after after harvest when they're in the heat. Yeah, you can see they are much, much greener. Yeah. You're in a green pod like that, the, those seeds are ready to start drying down. You're going to have a couple of really hot days coming. Yeah. And these would finish off just in the heat. They will, yeah. But the problem you have is you still have the moisture in the stem yeah. and in the yeah. leaves. Yeah, 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 okay. Eric, one of the comments when, we, when you were last visited us was uh, about pea vining because we're obviously wondering about harvesting and somebody suggested why don't we use a pea viner to harvest them. You say it has been done or it's been tried? Uh, back in the 70s and 80s there have been, there were attempts mm. then to try and use different types of harvesting equipment. Yeah. And pod strippers, pea viner was something that was trialed. Mm. Uh, can it work? I, I think the answer then was yes, it is an option, but it wasn't something that was scalable. Yeah. It wasn't something that could be uh, rolled out as a commercial system. Right, yeah. And a big issue still is the variety. So having a variety that's more reliable in terms of its production, mm. if you had the option of either fresh and freezing or harvesting as a dry, you got the same variety, two different options. The farmer might be able to have flexibility mm. as to when they harvest, mm. but you still have to have equipment on site. Yeah, yeah. And if you're going to yeah. freeze, you have to be close to a factory yeah. that can freeze. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So this is another variety, we've got three varieties here and this is Olivia which also is for the cooking market. These are further behind than any of the others, you can see they're still green. Here are the pods and the beans in here will actually turn black. I'm not sure whether these, I can't quite open them one hand and with a dodgy nail. No, they're still, they're still green there, you can see. But they'll turn black these will when they're ready. I've got my grandson Oscar with me and what are we doing this afternoon Oscar? We're harvesting. We are harvesting and what crop are we in now? Uh, oats. That's right we're in oats so we're just going to go and have a look uh, behind us in the crop here. Oscar's been here for this afternoon, uh, his mum Sam who some of you have seen in other videos is working from the office here at the farm so we're just going to go and have a look at the oats here. We've got the combine is ready to be emptied in the distance but we'll just have a look in the crop here and then you can see what these oats are. Yeah? Yeah. So you can see these oats are quite flat. They're really starting to buckle over just like the oats were on the heath that you've seen in the video a few minutes ago. But they're not growing in the bottom like the, uh, like the others are. So we'll have to just see. There's Oscar. What have you got there? Have you got a handful? Yeah. Yeah. But they're not rubbed out either. There's lots of sort of chaff and things around the edge of that. We'll let the combine rub it out, don't we? There we go. And what have you been eating? Looking at your face. So, two ice creams. Two ice creams! Wow. I've only managed one. Couldn't get a better day for combining these oats. 29 degrees, quite a lot of wind, you can see. So it's going really well. The moisture of them is only 11 and a half, which is plenty dry enough, but I'd rather it that way than having it uh, too wet. At least it's nice and fit now. You can tell by the dust, you can tell by the way the straw's chopped. We've chopped it really finely. Just going to empty the combine again, just showing you the wind. It's perfect when it's this way on because the wind's blowing all the straw and the dust away from the tractor. It's amazing the amount of times the tractor and trailer, or the tractors and radiators on the trailer get completely um, full. See there, lovely cracking day today for combining oats. Because 
So this is the second to last field of oats. This field's only just under four hectares. And then there's another one beyond that, beyond the combine that's five hectares. Well, I don't think we'll get them done tonight because the dew comes down early. And we'll see though, and I'll have to finish them off uh, in the morning. And then we've just got a field of seed barley to finish off or to do as well. That there's a um, crop of laureate growing for Agri under contract to seed. It's Wednesday evening, just looking at some of the fields that we've soloed. Um, a couple of weeks ago, Tom did these, baked out really hard, which is great, but we're just waiting for the hedges to get cut around the outside. That's why Tom's left uh, some of this. But when you just look at this, hard and dry and baked out, but that's just what we want. It will do really good this. So I'll just flick the camera around. You can just have a look and see what it's like. So here we go. You can see there's a fair bit of moisture in it when it was done. You can tell by the size of the lumps when you look at my hand little bit of moisture under there you can just see it's dark but good this is it will dry out just what we want and rain on it will make the lumps just fall apart you see there that's a bit rougher but not greening up much at all yet but it'd be great it's coming wheat again in here and we won't do any more to here apart from just come straight in with the drill and we'll plant the wheat in here the drill will run at sort of at that angle so we'll be through all these little bits of straw and the drill will spread those out and, and level it and keep the field nice and level. So looking good, ready to get winter wheat, a good crop established for this next harvest. Just walking in the spring beans now and these are not going to yield very well at all. If you look at the pods, look, let's just pick a stem. That's a stem. We've got nothing at the bottom near my hand. We have a few pods in the middle of the plant there and nothing at the top. So what's this stem got on it? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight pods, maybe nine with a little one. So really poor. This was sprayed with glyphosate just over a week ago. You can see the weeds are starting to go off now, which should be good. We're going to leave this till after the weekend and it will be, um, they'll be gone off completely then. And uh, these are going to be really brittle and dry. We, uh, we might be able to do these in the morning when there is a bit of damp because it means the pods won't be so brittle. But these weren't harvested, or sorry, planted until April the 19th is when we drilled these. But yeah, not going to be a very good crop at all. But we knew it would be difficult to get a decent crop. And if you remember, I said we're still going to carry on planting them because the following wheat benefits uh, from beans. So, yeah, when you look, just... very sparse so yeah these will not be yielding very well but i understand a lot of spring crops aren't this year so that's it for another midweek update reuben and tom did finish the oats which is great tonight so we had tomorrow thursday we'll be on to the spring barley seed 30 acres about the headlands of that weren't planted if you remember seeing the crop earlier on uh, in the year that's after sugar beets so the into that tomorrow afternoon and get that done while the weather's good. That wasn't desiccated, it wasn't round up off or had any chemical treatment on it to help it to harvest because it's a seed crop, the germination needs preserving. So be into that tomorrow and then next week into the beans. Thanks very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed this update. Come please come back with any questions. Yeah, you can see the oats haven't been brilliant, haven't been very good, but we'll have a full resume on yields of the whole crop um, in the next couple of weeks, something like that. Thanks for watching. See you on Sunday.